living in the city Wish I was on a country road I was driving in the city Wish I was on a country road Turn off my stereo Lay back and watch things grow up in my machine I'm sitting behind a bus cooped up in my machine You know this busy city traffic it just kind of makes you feel real mean Woman, she wants a city life. She just don't understand. It's all a bunch of jive. All that fancy food won't get you nowhere when you can't drink the water and you can't breathe the air all alone.
Welcome to number 24, A Passport to India. Fasten your seatbelts. <laughs> Put your tray tables in the upright position. <laughs> Here we go. No, no, no. This is actually number 139, flashback to 24. When I first met Mani, and we're going to tell uh, just a little story about that. Uh, Dr. L. Subramani, I call him Mani. Um, when I first met him, the producer for the show in 1999 was Dr. Santi. And Dr. Santi is an eye doctor, and I asked him when I met him if he was an ophthalmologist or a pessimologist. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so this, this is uh, the, the passage to India. My passage to India came about because of a friend named just Jim Bessman, friend of Holly's and mine. Right, Holly? Correct. Okay. So, when I met Jim, it was through the mail. Probably in the late 60s, early 70s. I would get letters from this fellow named Jim Bessman, and I, I wrote him back all the time. He was, he was just a youngster. Well, later he became a major music journalist for Billboard magazine, and actually had a, a column. And so Jim, well, you could tell the story, Holly. I'll hold it and you could tell the story about okay. how, you know, okay. Jim. Well, um, here comes Holly. Jim, Jim was interviewing Dr. Subramaniam, who was playing at a major venue in New York City. And uh, they were talking about a project that, that Dr. Subramaniam was launching. It was called Global Fusion. And it brought in different flavors and colors from all over the world. And so Jim said, oh, uh, I have a good friend, Corky Siegel, and he, he likes mixing up genres and music, and he has a, a, a tabla player and, and strings, and he's mixing blues and classical. And, and um, Dr. Subramanian thought that was quite interesting. And, and Jim said, where, where are you going next on your, on your travel after your after your performance here in New York City. <laughs> and uh, Dr. Subramaniam said, well, I'm, I'm going to Chicago. And Jim said, well, Corky Siegel lives in Chicago. You are kidding. I must have his number. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so he, he called Corky from the airport and said, you must uh, perform with me. I'm performing at uh, Symphony Center, Chicago's Orchestra Hall. I want you to join me. And Corky was excited, but also yeah, terrified. I, yeah, I said, "Oh, I said, I said, oh, I, I, I can't do that. I'm just, I just play blues licks. You know, I'm just a blues player. And you know, well, I, let me just so, so I just kept saying no. You know, I don't think I should do it. And he just said, "Well, we're gonna do it." <laughs> <laughs> so that's another story. And, and by the way, the story about Subramaniam and, and passage to India and is really in ten parts. 
We're just going to share the teeniest part of part one here with you and get into this deeper some other time. But I just want to tell you how intimidated we were, Holly and I, when we were going to meet Dr. L. Subramani Amani for the first time. Uh, and this was going to be, by the way, Chicago Barbecue meets Indian Tandoori. And who knew what was going to come out of that? And as I told you guys at an earlier stream, I was in Canada and there was this Indian musician and I went up to compliment him. And he asked me, he says, have you ever been to India? I says, yeah, I was just there recently. And he says, oh, what brought you there? And I says, I was playing with Dr. El Subramanian. And immediately the guy on the dirt, it was an outdoor festival, on the dirt, fell down and touched my feet because I even knew Dr. El Subramanian. So um, this is uh, Yehudi Menu, a quote from Yehudi Menu. I find nothing more inspiring than the music making of my very great colleague, Subramanian. Each time I listen to him, I am carried away in wonderment. That's Yehudi Menuhin. And then he played with, uh, you know, and recorded and collaborated with Stefan Grappelli, Ruggiero Ricci, Jean Pierre Rampal, Herbie Hancock, Joe Sample, Jacques Luponti, um, Lucky Ali. Uh, a pop star, and, and a Muslim pop star, George Duke, Al Jarreau, Earl Klug, and uh, Ravi Coltrane, Stanley Clark, Ernie Watts, uh, Hubert Laws, John Handy, George Harrison, and he wrote the music. Uh, actually, he soloed in, uh, as a soloist in the movie Little Buddha and Cotton Mary, and then he wrote the music for Alvin Alley and for Salam Bombay and Mississippi Masala. And in India, he's known the god of violin. And he wants me to, to play with him. <laughs> so we're going to meet him. We meet him at the hotel in Chicago. Immediately we see him. He says hello. He says, get in the cab. And we get in. We're sitting in the back seat of the cab. And Nani is sitting in the front seat, and we're like all shriveled up in the back seat, trembling, <laughs> you know, with Dr. El Subramaniam sitting in the front seat. And he turns around, puts his elbow over the front seat of the car, and says, I have a joke for you. <laughs> so I have been dying to share this joke with you all. This is my favorite, the favorite musician joke. In fact, as I toured with Mani, I would always ask him, tell that joke, tell that joke. Because the joke has a lineage. It was told to him by Yehudi Menuhin. And then Subramaniam tells a joke to Holly and I. And we're thinking, he should tell the joke. He's closer up in the lineage. And <laughs> he would insist upon me telling the joke. It was an insanity. So I ended up telling this joke all over the world. Now I'm going to tell you. There were two violinists on the street. One said to the other, how are you doing? And the one violinist said, well, now that you mention it, really not bad. Uh, I was just signed by RCA Records, and my record should be coming out soon. They really have really good, good great hopes for it. And also, I just played at Lincoln Center full house, standing ovation, just an incredible concert. And you know, I was actually playing in church the other day, and I played so beautifully that the statue of the Virgin Mary actually shed a tear, shed a tear. So how are you doing? <laughs> and the other violinist said, well, now that you mention it, not so bad. I was signed by Columbia Records. The record's already been released. It sold so many copies, they signed me to a five record contract. And I'm already working on the second record. And you know, I also played a concert. I was at Carnegie Hall. The show sold out in advance. They had to add four other shows. I was getting standing ovations throughout the whole concert. And you know, now that you mention it, I was playing in church myself. 
And Jesus himself came down and said to me, thank you. Thank you for not making my mother cry. <laughs> it's a favorite. What else can you say? What else can you say? So, I, I want to just give you a, a little taste of, of, of my friend Mani's personality here. So, this is, this is a photo that was shot in Wilmette a few years ago. Now, every once in a while, we try to pick up the tab at a restaurant for Monty because he's been so good to us. So, I mean, unbelievably good. Well, this time, he not only, he stole my credit card. <laughs> and he said he's not returning. This is, this is me fighting for the credit card. <laughs> and he won't give it back to me. <laughs> and, and, and he said he's going to take it back to India with him, but don't worry, he's going to send it back to me by boat. By boat. By boat. <laughs> Takes about three months. <laughs> so that's us fighting over it. So now another little tidbit. Let's see, I wrote, I wrote them down. I just want to make sure I get them all. Uh, tidbits. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I was, first time I was touring with him in the U.S., he and his wife Kavita would say to me before I went on to perform my part, are you going to fall down? <laughs> <laughs> so they loved it when I got on my knees. Those of you who have been to Corky's concerts, yeah, you know he always... Yeah, they always want me to roll around on the floor and everything. Gets like down on the, on, the, on the stage. And, so. and one time I went up to Kavita right before she went on. and I, Or no, right after she came off to, doing a solo. And I said, Kavita, would you mind if I just had some, you know, some uh, advice for you? And everyone was standing around going, oh, what are what? you saying? It's Kavita. <laughs> what? I said, I think it'd be really interesting if you would fall down during your singing. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the other one is when I was playing a concert with, with Supermanium. And, and it was one of those times standing ovations and cheers and encores and the whole thing. And, you know, Mani is just playing with so much soul and so much reverence for music and we all we're all backstage and we're there just in the glow of the performance and Manny looks up at us and goes fool them again <laughs> he's he covers the whole thing he's very humorous and fun so now one of holly's and my favorite places on earth and it's been this way since i first went to san francisco was Muir Woods. Now Muir Woods is just a little sample of the Redwood Forest, but it's a very nice sample. And we asked Subramaniam and Kavita and Ambi, have they ever been to Muir Woods? Have they ever seen the Redwoods? They never saw the Redwoods. And I'm telling you, you could go to the Grand Canyon, the Grand Tetons, you know, all over the world and there is nothing like the redwoods. I was trying to think of the right way to say this, but you guys will understand. If an atheist went into the redwoods, something big would happen, at least for the moment. <laughs> I, could, I could attest to that. <laughs> uh, so we brought them to the redwoods, and here's a picture of the redwoods. Of, yeah. You know, it's not really great trees in the background, but, but you could see they're very contemplative, they're very happy. And that's how the Redwoods made me feel. It became my whole reference for meditation when I started meditating. I sort of always relate to that feeling the Redwoods gave me. So here's the Subramanian family inside of a Redwood tree. Yeah. I have to move it up. Move it up. Okay, well, that's as good as we're going to get it. <laughs> anyway, this is, this is very relevant. It's very relevant to this, this live stream because we would bring people to, to the Redwoods 
and we brought Richard Halajian. I hope Patty Halajian is watching. He's our late violist with Chamber Blues. And he had polio and he had a brace. And going to the Redwoods wasn't a, something he was looking forward to. But we absolutely insisted. And we, we pretty much kidnapped him and got him in a wheelchair and rolled him into the Redwoods forest. And he started crying tears falling down his cheeks and saying, thank you so much for bringing me here. Thank you so much. And then, and you tell the story about Sam, because we brought, we brought oh, Sam, Sam to the Red Sam. Uh, Sam, we brought Sam and his family. Sam Lay, Sam Lay. Sam Lay, yes, of course. Um, and for those who don't know Sam Lay. Sam Lay is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the Blues Hall of Fame, and he's one the character of follow. the great blues uh, living legends of, of uh, percussion. And his son, Michael, is his son, on, Michael on the streams all the time. Yeah, usually watches. Hi, Michael. Hi, Sam. So Sam... Um, he was not too thrilled about going to see some trees. <laughs> and so we said, no, no, Sam, and Liz. You're, you're really going to love this. And, and Liz, uh, his wife, was, was with us. And we, um, we packed a, a, picnic, um, a picnic lunch. So, uh, so, we went, so we went to the Redwoods. And we dragged him. He was, he was enthralled. He was just... It, it, if you've been to the Redwoods, you know it's awe-inspiring, and he was just enthralled, and particularly Liz was just really, really taken with the majesty of, of these extraordinary trees. It's like being in a uh, nature's cathedral. And so um, Liz passed away uh, a few years ago, and her daughter Deb uh, reported back to me that um, that one of the last things that Liz said, and Deb said, I don't know what she was talking about, but she just, she kept saying, the big trees, the giant trees. And so I think she was making a peaceful transition through a magical place. Yes, and that brings us right to the last song. called Sleepy Hollow. I tried to learn it, and, but the chorus of Sleepy Hollow, which is on which record it's on? It's on Sleepy oh. Hollow record. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Yes, it's, it's on, on the Sleepy Hollow record. It's on the there. Sleepy Hollow record right here, and which is actually a CD. And it is? It's available on uh, Quickie's website. And, and, uh, and Jim just does a spectacular version with the guitar and yes, also does. his vocal harmonies. And the other um, the first song the first song that Corky did is is on Wish I Was on a Country Road. Wish I Was on a Country Road is on this one also available. So if yeah, you're so interested in plug. having them, you they are available. So the chorus of the Sleepy Hollow was my first meditation song. It's when I was getting into meditation and I wanted to describe it in this song. And so going to Sleepy Hollow is really going deep inside. And so, just so you know, the, the chorus is Sleepy Hollow is my home because I felt like it's in there. It's in the woodlands. It's in my mind and that's a reference to the redwoods. And it's in my mind, so it's not reality, it's more of a projection of my perspective, okay. And said, the water is sweet, the air is pure. That's actually a, an expression of that there's purity in there. And then it says, a place no one could ever find, a place no one could ever hope to find. And what that means is that you can't find it out there it's in there and it's sort of hidden. You gotta dig deep. And you never really find it. But it offers you this incredible way of experiencing the world. No, that's the song. <coughs> and thank you guys for joining the live stream. I hope you enjoyed it today.
country cottage in the wild wood leave my troubles on the way I'm going down to sleepy hollow it's been a while Least I know since I rested in the redwood trees, watch and felt the willows grow. Sleepy hollow, it's my home. Woodlands, it's in my mind. The water's sweet, the air is so pure. A place no one could ever hope to find. I'm going down to Sleepy Hollow. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you on the Zoom. And we'll see you next Friday. This is Tuesday next Friday. I know. Because <laughs> we do this every twice a week. So, so we shall resume. Is my It's in the woodlands. It's in my mind. No one could ever hope to find. Stay safe, wear your masks. We love you. Thank you. Bye bye.